Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new episode of the RGM podcast with me, Carl Malone. Hey, up. We're back for another week. Uh, and we're here with Gail Porter. Hi, mate. How are you doing? You all right? I'm fine. Thank you very much. I'm sure lots of people probably won't even know. They go, who's that old lady with no hair? Um, yeah. Pe- 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 people just say, who's that old man with hair to me? well i remember i remember your whole career gail i can remember you know you as a tv presenter i remember you being all all over the place but before we go into delve back into the past a little bit um when when we were booking you uh for this chat um you mentioned that you'd been up to edinburgh fringe festival and you would uh and you and you, and you like you and you like it up there and you and you know it, i just want because we cover a lot of music and comedy on this podcast i just wanted to get your take on the edinburgh fringe this year and just you know how, how, how did he get on with it uh well i was in it so it was great oh go so, on <laughs> no um i love it i'm from edinburgh yeah. so it's yeah. um you know um i try and get there every single year obviously we had um covid and lockdown so there was a few years missing so this year it was the first year that actually got back on its feet again yeah. and um it was so vibrant and so wonderful and i only had i think four days up there but four days of just constant going to see amazing comedy didn't manage to see did I see music I can't remember oh no I did a karaoke but um yeah so yeah no it's just it's my hometown and from the minute I get off the the train at Waverley Station I get a hug from one of the guys that works there or the girls Uh, they're like welcome home wee man and um I remember Honey once um saying my daughter when we went to Glasgow someone called me a wee man and they're like all right wee man and Honey got a little bit upset and she thought it was because I was bald. She thought okay. they were calling me a wee man. And yeah. I was like, no, 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 it's a term of endearment. <laughs> someone says, all right, wee man, you can say it to male, female, whatever, is a term uh, of endearment. It's like a certain other word that we use up in Scotland that begins with a C. So you can use that yeah. in a, in a, as a term of endearment, going, you're a good... You know? I'm, I'm well aware of the Scottish language. I've got family that live in Fife, just over the bridge from Edinburgh. Yeah, I know Fife. In, Le- yeah. in Leaven, uh, Kokodi, we're just further up, further up the coast a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's quiet it, around there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's re- really nice. I can remember. We've got uh, a Sea Life Centre. I had a sea life center. I had a massive hangover, and I had a walk up the beach, and it was it was the nicest thing to be able to do. I think just to just to break the you just instantly get rid of the cobwebs, and you and then you can crack on with your day. I, I, I like I- that vibe. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about Scotland is mm. it, not every put we're in Scotland, but from Edinburgh, you know, you can get up, you might have had a big old crazy night, but mm. you can go down, walk along the seafront, or you can walk up Arthur's seat, um, and or you can go to the castle, or mm. you can walk down to Holyrood Palace, or you can bump into an American that says, Hey man, is this the Royal Mile? How long is it? It's like it's quite a long <laughs> yeah. mile. It's the Royal Mile, mile. I mean, would say there's probably like a few meters out or something, but it's the Royal Mile. Uh, <laughs> Did, did I miss something there then? So you said you were in, you were in it. Were you performing? Were you doing stuff in the no, festival? No, I was um, John Bishop, um, the comedian, ah, yes. was doing the show and I was his guest. So ah. we were performing, um, where were we performing? At the Edinburgh Uni buildings. And um, it was good. So it's coming out on a podcast, I think, next week or something. Oh, nice. So it's a live show. And so we did that. And my friends came to see it, which was quite funny because I always get a bit nervous when my friends come just because I probably told them everything. But sometimes when somebody asked you something different in a different way. Yeah. So, um, which apparently John did, because when it, when it finished, my friends were all going, I didn't know that bit. I didn't know that bit. And I was like, ah. So yeah, that was great fun. And then also, um, yeah, I just, I did another one, um, another show, an afternoon show for a friend of mine. Um, do you know, I'll literally rock up if someone says, <laughs> do you want to join in on my show? I'll go, yeah, I'm from Scotland. I'll what, come. Was that, what was that one then? What were you doing in that one? Well, it's my friend Frizz Frizzle, and he's got this thing called What's in the Box, and he has um, a, a varying degrees of, of me, I think there's usually four, four of us. I've done it a few times before, and we just sit on the stage, and he pulls things out of a box, and then it, it's a bit sort of improv type okay, stuff. Nice. But do you know what? At midday, yeah, it's fun. It, yeah. yeah. Oh, we nice. Can have a laugh, yeah. Have you been to the, the festival? I've never been to Edinburgh Festival. I've been to Edinburgh loads of times. I've never been to the festival yet. I've, uh, so I, 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 need, I need to. Uh, I'm just scared of how much it costs as a Yorkshireman. Um... Well, you know what you need to do? You need to either book now. Yes, yes. So I always say to everybody, book a year in advance. Mm. Or you make friends with people in Edinburgh, which lucky, luckily enough, I'm from Edinburgh. So yep. this time I managed to, my friend was on holiday. So she went, she wants to look after my house while you're doing the fringe. And I was like, 
yeah. So I got the house there and um I yeah, train a boot. Okay, yeah. Ellie. I'm going to do it, Gail. Super early. It's, it's just one of those things I just haven't got around to yet. You know, I've, I, I try and do as much as I can. It's just... You know what? If you leave it to the last minute, you, you'll pay oh, yeah. five, six yeah. times the amount that you pay now. And I know it sounds super crazy to book things this early, but it makes a huge difference. And then once you get up there, you get free tickets. They're going, oh, come and see this show for free. Come and see this show for free. Or you'll bump into somebody. And also you can just queue up outside a, a great show and someone's going, do you know what? My friend can't make it. Do you want the ticket for a tenner? Just swing it. You see, I'm, I'm old. I know these things. <laughs> well, you know, you've got loads of, you know, through the years of being a TV presenter, a media personality, and, you, you know, you're a storyteller. You've got you've got loads of stories, Gail. Have you ever flirted with the idea of doing a bit of stand-up? Well, I'm looking at it for next year, to be honest. Well, go on. I know. I told Honey, I, uh, I think I'm really funny, which she just laughed at. Where I thought, well, if you laugh at that, then I'm winning. Yeah. But no, I, I, do you know what? I think about it quite a lot, and I've just... Yeah. Yeah, I've just finished writing something and there's a whole lot of stuff coming out. And um, I just think, yeah, I, I love talking and I love telling a story. And I've got friends that are doing stand up. And I thought, you know, even if I bomb it, at least I go, I gave it a bash. Yeah, well, I, I did that about 10 years ago. I did stand up comedy for, uh, I were in a band for years and everybody got boring and stopped it. Uh, and then I needed I needed oh. something else to do creatively. Um, what and did I'm you always, do the band? I was just a rhythm guitarist, easy bit. Uh, a bit of backing vocals. Nothing's yeah. easy in a band. Nothing's yeah. easy in a well, band. One story for you, Gail. The Arctic, we, uh, the Arctic Monkeys supported my band the first ever gig they did. They played in Sheffield. Oh, my God. That's, well, that, um, that's my think, story that I tell everybody for. I think Cold, Coldplay supported Honey's dad at uh, one point. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Everyone's yeah, got no. a story. Everyone's got a story. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's my little story. And when the band stopped, I, 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 I attempted, I, I did 50 gigs in a year just to give it a go. I didn't love it as much as what I love music. I didn't love the, uh, I, I didn't work hard enough at it and get good enough at it to, to, to do. Your heart, like was it. your heart not in it? Not really, but I wanted to give it a really good go. Yeah, uh, I, to be in it. I, I just had that bucket list thing in my head all the time. Just, just, if you're not going to do it, uh, I, I felt like I, I gave it a good go, uh, but my heart wasn't in it. Uh, and I and I love music, but what it did open up for me though was loads of other opportunities because I started hosting music gigs again. I started putting bands on in Sheffield. I needed somewhere to put these band interviews uh, somewhere online, and then it turned into this magazine organically uh, called RGM that I do now. So it's so so it's given me so much. Uh, it just wasn't for me when I tested it out. Um, but you've got you've got to get yourself out of the comfort zone, haven't you? No, absolutely, hundred percent. I don't even know what a comfort zone is anymore. Yeah. <laughs> anything that seems comfortable i wouldn't do it no <laughs> so i'm wearing a, a t-shirt by the october drift oh yes no we were so, chatting about this the other day yeah we had a little chat the other day didn't we and uh just a, a friend of mine who manages neil who manages the lads uh said you've seen him in london i just wanted to ask you about this story and just so <laughs> what, what what went on mate <laughs> okay so this is another thing so i i kind of like i just do what i want um so i went to camden crawls and um, my friend Danny Watson, who's worked in music for ages and ages, he worked with Alan McGee. And did it. Mm. anyway, he had been telling me about this band, The Asylums, mm. which I'm sure you've heard of The Asylums. They're doing really well at the moment. Well, I mean, they're amazing. But um, so anyway, I was just wandering around um, Camden Rocks. And then I was walking past Camden Tube Station and out walk, walk this band and they're all struggling like crazy. Mm. And, you know, I just thought, Oh, bless them. <laughs> See if I can, like, I was like to one of them, I was like, does anyone need a hand? And they went, are you Gail? And <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. And they went, we're the asylums. And I was like, oh my God. So you know Danny. And I, it was one of those, like, you know, one of those moments. And then they said, oh yeah, we're just playing up at that pub. And I said, well, I don't have a wristband because I, t no, no offense, Camden Rocks. I just sort of wonder it. I'm two, I'm five foot one. I mean, <laughs> nobody like, knows. <laughs> no, nobody notices I'm even there. So um, anyway, they took me up and I said, I don't have a wristband to get in. He said, well, we'll just say that you're working with us. <laughs> like, okay. So I'm carrying in whatever. I think I was carrying a guitar, pretending I'm super cool. And then got in there and then watched the Asylums play. Uh, well, they were setting up, I think. And then I went outside and October Drift were coming in. Never, never heard of them. And um, well, obviously I know who they are now because I think they're fabulous. But they were coming in and they were all like that. It's like, you know, they're all like young and they're trying to get all this stuff out the van. I was like, can I help in any way? <laughs> <laughs> Little Rhoda. 
they were all like yeah honestly I feel like a roadie because I usually wear dungarees and stuff so I look like a tiny you know person with nothing to do <laughs> and people just feel sorry for me and go oh just give her uh-huh. something to carry so um they were like oh no thanks I think we're all right and I was like okay so they were playing in the same place as the asylums so that was my weird wander around Camden Rocks day yeah, funny. Did you help them out on the merch stand as well? As well, did you? You, got, you got proper deep in it, into it. I was just like, can I help with that? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I could sell anything. I used to work in B and Q, so yeah, um, yeah no, I, that was it. So I'm going to go and see the Asylums at the end of this month. They're playing at um, Rough Trade East in London Town, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'll, hopefully, I'll go and see October Drift again because they're. Do you know what? I love it when they all. You, when you see bands starting out and you think, I know that, they're going to be great. They're going to be great. So, and, yeah. And, and they are. I've I've followed October Drift. They're, they've got a big following in Sheffield, where I'm from. And uh, I go and see them in Manchester when they're over. Now I live, now I live over here. Just, it's really, I've had them on the podcast. Just really nice guys. You know, if you're, if you're watching. Very down to earth. It's Kieran, isn't he? Yeah. Really yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah. Well, and have you seen Asylums, the Asylums? I've not seen them live, but I, I am aware of them, yeah. Oh, you must go see them live. They're yeah. superb live. You know, they're, they're, when you chat to them, they're the nicest, quietest blokes, and then suddenly they're on stage, and then you, stage diving. Animal. I love a bit of stage diving. I was like, <laughs> wow, I never thought that was coming. <laughs> I watched the Skinner. Have you heard of the Skinner Brothers? They're from London. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, on last week's podcast, uh, I had Zach on, on the Skinner Brothers, uh, and I actually saw him this weekend in Manchester for Neighbourhood Festival. Uh, oh, and, and they were in a venue called Gorilla, and somebody got in a gorilla suit and jumped out uh, uh, on the stage with them and then jumped into the crowd. They're, they're just bonkers, aren't they? They're just brilliant. Yeah, mad. I think Simone Butler was there from the bassist from Primal Scream. Oh, was they? I, I... She. Oh, she. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, Simone. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think she was up there. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, it, 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 I love Mad Bands and uh, just the whole music thing because you, you know, you. You, you've been a host of Top of the Pops and that kind of stuff in the past. Yeah. Like <laughs> but you've, always, you've always had this musical history there, haven't you? Well, when I was a wee tiny person, like smaller than I am now, <laughs> um, I used to have a hairbrush. Well, obviously I don't have a hairbrush now, but when I was little, I had a hairbrush and I would stand in my front room and I was, um, maybe I can't even remember how old I was, say 10 or something, or looked, I don't know. And then I would just go, hello, it's Gail, top of the pops. And then Madonna or somebody would come on or Boomtown Rats and I'd dance in the front room and my dad was like, what are you doing now? <laughs> and I was like, oh. And then eventually it came true. And when I got the phone call, they were just like, would you like to um, host top of the pops? <laughs> Hang I mean, on. Is that just like an agent manager that gives you a call then? Or is it actually yeah. them from the studio? Or how does it work? I can't, do you know what? I can't remember because it was, I think it's probably an agent must have called me then because I don't have agents now. I don't, I don't bother. I just yeah. swing by the <laughs> seat of my pants and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. and, and, um, but yes, I mean, someone gave me a call and, you know, it was the BBC, not great money. Didn't matter. I didn't care. It was top of the pops. Yeah. And then, but they had a box for me. I think you, if you listen to Louis, Therese, oh yeah, to stand on, to stand on, because I was I'm five foot one, so all the kids yeah. were taller than me, so um, they, they needed to have a box so that I could stand up and go, yeah. And so there were certain bands that you know you'd interview, you, you'd introduce a band that you've never heard of at all ever, um, and you never hear of them again. I remember one that my daughter always thought was very funny. I was going, but actually this this band still is going, but I didn't know who they were. I mean, hello. Um, please welcome on, on to the top of the pops our great friends binary finery but i think she thought it was more funny because saying binary finery <laughs> Scottish, it sounds really weird <laughs> but yeah they were kind of like a techno band i think i yeah. don't know i didn't really follow them but i know they're still around somewhere but it's it's always surprised me with top of the pops it, it was such a big name probably one of the biggest like programs that musicians wanted to get on or, or presenters or whatever but what, why was it that a lot of the bands on there kind of like took the piss while they were on there you know famously uh, Oasis took the piss on there when they swapped roles the Gallagher brothers or that kind of stuff and I oh, see I wasn't there so I've never people seen miming. oh okay yeah no I think I, I mean just over, over the years many bands have kind of like like not yeah, taken I think, seriously I think, I think a lot of bands you know um previously had to mime and I think a lot of them yeah. were a bit angry about that but do you know what it's it's got to be filmed in a certain amount of time it's got to go out the next day at a certain amount of time it's not like they're in a, a festival and everything so I can get the frustration 100% but then you've got to understand there's a whole crew of people that need to get it recorded get it edited get it together get it out and it's the BBC and I'm not being funny they're not the best people to work with 
Yeah, okay. And I'll say that because, yeah, I, I've never really had the best. Uh, BBC Scotland, yes, I've had a great time with BBC Scotland. BBC in itself, no. Okay. So I think, you know, they, they've got that little bit of time. And also they can uh, take the mickey because they know that they can't keep recording it and recording it and recording it because everyone's under us. You know, they've got a tight schedule. So if Oasis want to do their mucking about thing, you know, the, the producer's not going to go, sorry, we can't, we're not going to put Oasis on because they're mm. going to be on. Yeah. So yeah, I think I would have done it if I was in a band. Was it not much fun then behind the scenes at Top of the Pops? Oh my God, Top of the Pops was great fun. Mm. Oh, it was the best fun. And I'm just talking about the logistics of the BBC. Oh, okay. Uh, the so, actual... no, actually okay. doing the show was fantastic fun. And if the bands did take the mickey, we'd be having as much fun as they were. And it was just like the big head honchos were freaking oh, okay. out. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, right. Fair we need to get everything. Oh, no, it was the best fun. I mean, who could complain? I used to get picked up because I was doing the big breakfast in the morning. Then I get picked up, go to Top of the Pops at night, and you've got all these bands, you're hanging out, you know, Cypress Hill are saying, do you want to go out afterwards? I'm going, what? What is my life? I don't even understand. But yeah, I, I enjoyed every single second, and I'm extremely grateful for every minute of it. I had the most fun. I just, it's such a shame that a program like that is not on for kids today. It's, it is mental, isn't it? And what's it like going out with Cypress Hill then? Did you, did you go out with him? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. God. No, no, no. That. It was all, well, we kind of like hung out for a bit and then it was all getting a bit, uh, I was like, yeah, I think I should go home because I've got to be up at two o'clock in yeah. the morning to go back to the big breakfast. So yeah, it's a no, no. So <laughs> hung out with him for a bit. That was enough. I knew my limits in those days, you know? I just thought I could never keep going. Oh, I'm still trying to learn my limits these days. Well, you're young though. How old are you? 44. That's young. Mm. I'm young. I'm 51. Yeah, similar, hey, similar kind of ages. Similar kind of ages. Yeah. I'm, still, like, I'm still trying to learn my limits and you know, be a better regress. person every day. Just regress, I think. That's my thing. Yeah. I just regress. Now that my daughter's at uni and she can't get embarrassed of me, <laughs> you know, because she can't see me that often. <laughs> and as long as I don't get captured, then yeah. I'm all right. So I can do what I want. <laughs> yeah. So just hanging around the, the BBC thing then. So what was it that, you know, that you didn't like about BBC specifically? Oh, no, I mean, um, BBC, Scotland, BBC Scotland were great to work with. Uh, it was just like um, politics with um, managers and agents. So it's not like I was in there. It was just you knew that if the BBC were going to ask you something to, to do, it was going to it be an ongoing battle with people sort of getting... Uh, yeah, it was Is just it like, kind of... I'm, I'm guessing I mean, it's like you need about 10, 10 people to make one decision type thing. And it just... That sort of thing, yeah. Right. I mean, I don't know what it's like now because I, it just sort of like really bored me. And it's like, I like things. If someone says, do you want to do this job? Yeah. When is it? Then, great. Where do you want me to be? Fabulous. BBC, can we call you? We don't have any money. We'll get back to you. We'll call, we'll call <laughs> yeah. somebody else. And then da 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 and da, da da And nobody's got any money. I was like, yeah, okay, no. So it's... <laughs> It's just, yeah, I just want a straight answer. Like we all do. Yeah. I think, and the older I get now, I just can't be bothered. I can't be bothered with the bullshit. I just want, just yeah. yes or no, like, just let me know. You want me to do something or you don't. It's that easy. Yeah, simple. it is, isn't it? Are you going to pay me or you're not? Yeah. And yeah. then and then you know where you stand and then you can just make a decision either way, can't you? Absolutely. So you, you mentioned the big brother there. That's that's coming back. Uh, not big brother, sorry. Big, uh, big breakfast. Oh, big breakfast. No, big I think it came back, back a few weeks ago. I think they did it. Now. Okay, I keep missing. I think they, they did it for a couple of weekends. Um, mm. I did watch a, a tiny wee bit of it, but it was quite loud. I was like, <laughs> shout. I mean, I know we were quite loud um, back in the day, but it was really loud. So I don't know if it's because I'm getting old, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't sort of sit through it. But I'm, I'm glad they brought it back. But I don't. I'm not. I don't think it's a, a an ongoing thing. Is it not. Oh, okay. Because I, I, so. I don't know. Because when I when I were a chap, you know, Big Breakfast, Top of the Pops, these iconic programs that you've that you've presented have been part of the, the history of these. That must be nice to look back on. Oh my god, we had so much fun! Literally, imagine I, I, I'd, I'd always I think Gail's having so much fun. You can just tell. Oh yeah, because you're young and you're just you know someone's saying there's a car picking up at two or half past two in the morning, yeah. and you're like, okay, fine. And I remember my partner at the time, he, he used to keep waking up going, where are you going? I was like, where do you think I'm going at two o'clock in the morning? I'm on the telly, yeah. yeah. Doing that stuff. He's like, oh yeah, right, okay, see you later. <laughs> right, <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, you. it was just fun because everyone was full of enthusiasm and we had great guests on. And, you know, you'd sit in um, a meeting and you'd be given a script. And if Johnny Vaughan, when Johnny Vaughan walked in, you know that the script would probably just mostly go out the window 
yeah. because you just we didn't know what was <laughs> happening. So it wasn't like doing a proper job. Yeah. It just wasn't like doing a proper job. It was literally like someone is letting you party for a week. What was it like working with Johnny Vaughan? Because I love Johnny Vaughan. I just, I just, uh, you know, he's just, he's just been a voice of uh, many generations. Really, he's still going now on the radio and stuff. And just, I, I'm watching just a few interviews on XFM with him recently, and he's still got that schoolboy charm and wit about him and cheekiness was, about him. He's still got it, and it was. Um, yeah, it was just chaotic, but I like chaos, but but wonderfully chaotic. You know, like you're hanging out with a bad boy from school that gets away with everything. Yeah, yeah. That was Johnny Vaughan. So, um, and you couldn't get words in edgeways <laughs> because he's got everything to say about everything and he always made you laugh so much. Mm. And uh, yeah, he'd sort of walk in in the morning and you just were thinking, wow, okay, what is going to happen today? You know, you just didn't know. You know, some jobs you go to and you think, right, you've got, you've got your schedule, do this, say that, da-da-da. You go into the big breakfast and everyone's just like, no idea. But you've got no Johnny's in, who knows? Yeah, well, I, I was doing a little bit of research and I, I listened to the Louis Theroux podcast that you did with him and really enjoyed that. Did you enjoy having that conversation with him as well? Yeah, well, I couldn't, be- I couldn't believe that Louis Theroux would even be, well, I didn't even know who I was or would be interested. And it was not long after my I, my dad had passed away and um, it all got very surreal. So I was like, oh, my dad's in the room. <laughs> I brought my dad's, well, not, not my whole dad, anyone that's like listening or yeah. watching. Um, I got my dad's cremated and he was here because it was um, lockdown and I couldn't take him to Scotland. So yeah, it was a great conversation. It was only supposed to be about, half an hour or something and we chatted for ages and it was so bizarre because I couldn't leave my house I couldn't see my daughter because I'd been ill I had my dad in the house it was locked down we couldn't travel and then suddenly I'm chatting to Louis Theroux on my sofa and I was like this is weird but he was great he was really amazing and lovely and he's just got a great way of talking that makes you open up yeah I've, I'm, I'm it's been quite a big inspiration for me since I got into like interviewing people and having trying to have conversations and just getting better at having conversations myself personally because you know historically my missus will tell anybody that you know I've I've found it I I don't open up easily or have conversations easily these podcasts kind of help me have conversations with other people to, to practice it really in a in a, in a weird yeah, I, kind of way I don't know I, I don't no, know I understand kind of because you're not kind of like you're not in a room with somebody but yeah. you're someone and then you could just suddenly like this is this is what marriage should be about this is why I'm not married because I love chatting but then I like shutting the laptop and I was going right and I'll go hang out with the cat Does that yeah. sound weird? That sounds no, no. Like that's shit. what I'm do- that's what I'm gonna be doing after this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah no it's, it's 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 easier to um to to drop your barriers when you're not actually sitting with someone yeah yeah no, I I think. Uh, so what, what was like the I'm just I'm just I've, I've been a fan of all Louis Theroux shows and that kind of stuff. I'm just wondering what like the process is and uh, how does it go about? Does he put you at ease a lot before or does he, how, how, what, what's, what kind of processes? I'm trying to learn from like what he does. And... You know what? Not really. I was in contact with the production company and okay. then um, they were like, yeah, he's pretty laid back. He does mm-hmm. this. He just chats. And, and then suddenly it was ding, there's Louis Theroux and mm-hmm. we're live. Yeah. I'm like, oh, Okay, so yeah, and I, do you know what? Sometimes the one thing I hate more than anything when I do any sort of interview is when people phone me up like, oh, I don't know, a few weeks before or a month before, yeah. and they say, All "Right, we're, we're we're thinking about asking you this." Then we think, and I was like, "Don't ask me anything now, mm-hmm. because it's all about being organic and just yeah. let the conversation flow." It's like you know, you're meeting your mates for lunch, or you're meeting your mate in a pub, and then you go, "Oh, guess what happened last night?" So yeah. you know, someone asks me a question a month in advance, or asks you a question. Yeah few weeks in advance you're thinking about it all the time thinking oh am I going to come up with something really funny or should I say this no 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 forget it just ask me something if I don't want to answer it we can argue <laughs> that's good I don't argue <laughs> I, I, I kind of just like go with bullet points and just have little things just to direct me through some kind of conversation with it but um I'm, so I there's loads of things we've already talked about today that I had no intentions of just talking about and I just like it that way and I think with Louis he's a he's a listener so then he might not plan on asking certain people certain things and then he'll listen 
you, you can watch when you watch his documentaries you can see that he's just listening and listening and then it moves into the direction that he wants it to go into which I think is a wonderful thing it's like if I go and see I used to love going to see Eddie Izzard um, doing stand-up because Eddie Izzard would be chatting and chatting about something and then suddenly he'll sorry she'll no she'll she'll say um oh yeah uh, this noise oh and then there was a cat drilling behind my sofa and then you know she goes all over the place and you're thinking where did that come from and then she'll suddenly go I can't remember what I was talking about and then she goes back to eventually getting into her stand-up and I love things like that because you know yeah it's nice to to not be planned to you know your brain to be planned to answer something yeah and uh, you know, <laughs> unless you like a really, really important uh, job interview, oh, or, God, uh, I'm, I'm a millionaire thing that program. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Where there's just pressure on you, and your mind's just going to go blank. Because yeah. if I went onto one of those things, I'd just be like, Yeah, I don't, even know, what... I don't even know my name anymore. I've just you just get me off this telly now. I've got no. I, I, I'm not going to do it. I actually started recording the chase because I think I'm getting old. I don't want to get like forgetful. Okay. <laughs> and sometimes in the nighttime, I like put it on. I was going, "Oh, well, I know that one. Oh, I know that one." And I phone my friends in the morning. Guess what I did? They went, "Did you win the chase last night?" I went, "Yeah." I did. Oh, you recorded it. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Then I phone my friends. Going, I won it. Yeah, I won it. But if I was actually standing there, I wouldn't win it. Have you ever done that when you record the lottery? Then buy a lot, the, the, buy a lottery ticket the week after with the same numbers on it. And then no, we'll I don't that. buy a lottery <laughs> ticket. I think I buy one. I, I'm, I'm going to take up that. Just as well. to play the game. Just to play the yeah, game. Think, yeah, just have fun. Yeah, I, I like what you said about the skill of listening, though, because I go again. If if you ask me, if you ask me why, if I can definitely do better at that, it is it is such a skill to just sit back and listen to the person and actually listen to them as well. Like, that is such. An underrated, uh, well, yeah, an underrated skill that you know people yeah. still need to get a lot better at, even in you know the professional media that surrounds us these days as well. I suppose. No, listening is very important because I do quite a lot of talks around the country mm. and um, about mental health and yeah. awareness, and and I think listening is such an important thing because I did one the other day in Leeds, which was great, and you know we opened up to get everyone to just talk to us and it was amazing the things that people I was just in tears on the stage because we, they didn't want to talk to other people because they felt that they were going to be a burden to other people and then suddenly they don't know us and we're on a stage and then they're over there and they just said right this is what's happening and it was so nice to oh yeah it wasn't nice to hear the stories that they were telling but it was nice to be able to be the person that they wanted to talk to and we could listen so it's very important. Sure. So I know you've, you've been a massive ambassador for, you know, talking and, you know, uh, a mental health advocate out there. I'm glad you said mental health advocate, not just talking. You mean <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, just talk, okay. Just for talking. My daughter would agree with that. I'm still I, talking. I, I still stumble and, um, you know, I'm still, I, I, I don't think I've uh, suffered from mental health issues. I probably will have. If, don't you know, overthink it if you don't think you have yeah. don't think it just go with it <laughs> don't, yeah, don't I, think it. <laughs> yeah no, i don't know it, it's it's kind of like it, it's one of those um on a bucket list of things that you want to have no i know i know i know God. Do you know what i did don't, don't don't take it yeah. <laughs> so you know i know you've, you've been this advocate for many years and, and and you've talked publicly about you know the things that you've had going on in your life and all that kind of stuff before so how how how, how much is it a necessity now in your life to you know to, to, to keep doing it and keep having these conversations with people to try and help them. I, I presume that's why you, you kind of do it as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's I wake up in the morning and I know that someone will talk to me at some point during the day about mm -hmm. something, uh, whether it's to do with mental health or depression or um, hair loss or yeah. illness. Um, because I've, like, like you said, I'm very open about it because... I mean, I don't think there's any point in keeping things back. We're only here on the planet for a short time. And, you know, I've lost my mum, I've lost my dad, I've lost my grandparents. And so if I can do anything for anybody, even if it's just going to the supermarket an hour early, which I always do, because I know someone's going to talk to me about something. And um, so, yeah, I'll just make, make it, you know, Simple things like that, or chatting to see. Not just because you're a public figure and um, people recognise you, and they'll think, "Oh, well, okay, I want man, I'm gonna chat with you." I, I think some people recognise me from stuff that I might have done on TV, but a lot of people in my neighbourhood, <laughs> yeah, 
That sounds like something like Sesame Street, doesn't it? <laughs> These are the people in my neighborhood. So, uh, but people just chat to me. So I was in um, a shop the other day and um, this lovely elderly couple round the corner, they waited for me because they had the car and they said, oh, we saw you with the shopping. So we thought we'd just take you home because I had a chat with them um, when we were out for lunch. Well, I wasn't out with lunch, but they were, yeah, anyway. Yeah. But um, yeah, and so people just chat. And I think I'm very fortunate in the place that I live because I introduced myself to all the neighbors. Probably my daughter would say it's not the best thing to do. I was like, hello, I'm Gail. Hello, I'm Gail. Hi, I live over there. You want to chat or anything? I'm on my own. I live with the cats. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think, yeah. So, so maybe some people recognize me from TV. Maybe some people just avoid me because I'm the weird neighbor. Maybe some people talk to me because I'm the weird neighbor. But I'm just very honest and open about my stuff. You know, I don't wear a, a wig. I don't wear a hat. Well, I do wear a hat when it gets super cold. But um, yeah. In fact, you know what? I had this conversation the other day. I was at um, a barbecue and this guy who'd um, he'd had a few drinks and um, suddenly he just said to me, do you not wear a wig because you want attention? And I said, I beg your pardon? And I, and I was like, no, I don't wear a wig because it's extremely uncomfortable. I, do you know, I'm all for people wearing wigs, do what you want. And I said, but personally, it's really uncomfortable and it's itchy and I don't like it. And then his wife cracks on and she's like, if I was you, I would wear more makeup and maybe like draw your eyebrows in. Wow. It's like, I've just come for a barbecue. <laughs> I, I could say huge oh, bits of things about you, but I'm not that kind of person. So I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk away. So mind your own business. And wow, if you want to talk to me about nice things, that's great. But don't tell me what I should look like and what I should be wearing. So it's, it, it, it always surprised me as well, like working, you know, doing the the, the music magazine thing when, you know, the, 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 the creative industry or the music industry seems to have uh, quite a, a, a problem with mental health itself really with, with people struggling or people needing support and extra help and you know just not being okay sometimes it just seems well, like that kind of industry if you if you get a chance go and see this documentary film about Sinead O'Connor mm. and um I mean, that highlights so many things that are wrong with the the music industry and PR and TV I mean I was in tears in the middle of it just seeing what she went through I'm a, I'm a huge fan but yeah, um, when when I first lost my hair, there was people saying, well, you, you better wear a wig or you better do this. Or do you know what? You're probably not going to work that much anymore. So we're just going to use you as an ambassador for alopecia. Because obviously that's all I know now. That's all I know. I'm just going to uh, use you as an ambassador. I'm going to use you yeah, as an ambassador. You're going to be that used mostly. No, they said you're mostly going to be used as an ambassador for alopecia. I don't mind being an ambassador for alopecia, but I just think, hang on a minute. I've worked in this industry since I was 25. Mm. And, and before that, I was a runner. So I've kind of like been in TV since I was about 19. I'm now 51. And then as soon as I lost my hair, they were like, mm, she looks different now. Yeah, no. And she's she, she said she's been depressed and she's had bad times. So... Yeah, just write her off, get somebody else in. So yeah, you do get treated like that. You do get treated, um, I'm, I'm sure it's the same in many different industries mm -hmm. across the board, but I think because it's uh, media or music, it's out there in the press. So people will talk about it because uh, you know there could be somebody that's working in the bank or someone working up in the co-op that's having a really crappy time and getting treated like shit, but we don't know about it. What kind of like, for, for somebody that's, you know, an advocate for it and being around it all these years, what kind of like um, signs would you see on somebody that might be suffering, um, that, you know, might be looking for help out there? What is there any kind of like... Do you know what? The I'm, I'm, I'm stumbling, I'm stumbling again, I get on my words again. <laughs> so I'm just trying. <laughs> there are no signs at all because do you know what? Yeah. You can look at, I mean, the, the, there's very there's a huge amount of famous faces. Robin mm. Williams, you would never have expected Robin Williams to be depressed. We didn't know what was going on and we were all shocked by his suicide. Mm. Um, and I mean, there's so many people that you just think, oh my gosh, I would never have known. Because what happens when, with a lot of people, if you've got mental health issues or, you know, I can go to bed, cry my eyes out and then get up the next morning and do something going, hi, yeah, amazing. So happy to be here get straight back home, cry my eyes out. And I think that a lot of people that suffer from any sort of mental health issues have got the ability to put on a face and go, it's fine, I don't want people to worry. 
but you know I've broken down in, in public before just being out and I thought I can't cope but th there are no signs the only thing you can do is listen mm. and then ask questions and so when you ask somebody are you okay and they go yeah yeah fine mm. ask again I mean, ask yeah, twice yeah. ask three times because you know everyone says I'm fine everybody says I'm fine and um so you just have to be that person that makes the effort to ask a few more times than you would do normally or say do you know what call me this afternoon if you want to talk about it now, just call me because I know we just know. You just know. How, is it, how is it for you? You know, like being like, I don't know, do pe people know they can talk to you about it? How, how, is, how is that for you to, you know, have your, your own struggles with it and to have to deal with other people's as well as, you know, your own uh, personal battles with it? You know, are the people looking out for you too? Um. Yeah, I mean, I've got friends that I can call, I know that, and I've got my daughter, and it's great that people talk to me, but sometimes I do switch my phone off at night, because if I'm not feeling great in myself, I think I'm not going to be the best person for you to talk to. Um, people I know, know that that's how I deal with things, hmm. so they'll know, fine, okay, I'll go and talk to somebody else. We've all got somebody else to talk to, so um, I'm there as much as I can be, but sometimes I need to go, do you know what I need I need to go and watch something really shit on Netflix and switch everything off. Because everything's quite shit on Netflix, actually, at the moment. So maybe I'll have to phone Netflix and complain. I've been off for a couple of weeks because I've had a little operation thing. So I've had a bit of time. Oh, on I'm sorry. Are you okay? Oh, no, it's all good. It's I've had one of them. Uh, a, a, it's a metallic thing put in my tube to stop acid reflux coming up. Oh, so I've got a few, I've got a few scars and things, and I'm still getting through it. Okay, but it's, it's yeah. It's quite, it, reflux is that is that down to a diet or is that down to? Uh, I, th I think uh, you know I, I have drunk through the years and probably diet and probably a, a few lifestyle changes that I'll need to make. But you're fine. Um, you're yeah, fine. Yeah, fine, yeah, perfectly fine. I'm just getting th just getting through the last stages of okay, you know, the healings and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's all good. So I've had, I've had a bit of time to watch a bit of Netflix over the last few weeks. You know what? Netflix can do really great times. And then suddenly once you've watched everything, so I've binge watched, yeah. I've got insomnia. So, mm. so it's probably not Netflix's fault. Um, <laughs> it's my fault that I've just, I've just watched everything. So um, obviously I just did Dharma. I didn't do Dharma. I I've watched it twice. Dharma. I've been through it twice, Gail Dharma. Oh my gosh. It's so good. I have to watch it again. Ever, ever, Evan Peterson, oh my God, yeah. he's just so brilliant. I've watched every single okay. American Horror Story and all the offshoots of American Horror Story. There's nothing left for me to watch. So Kirsten, I need to Kirsten see if I can... home and she said, you're watching serial killers again. I, I've, I, I get kind of into, and then I started going on YouTube and watching the, the real interviews with him and that kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah, it yeah. just ended up down this big, massive serial killer. Uh, I've always been fascinated with serial killers and I do watch it a lot. I'll probably watch it too much. I don't know if you can. I think I watch it all the time and yeah. then... It's a thing, I'm, isn't it? It's a, it's a normal thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, I live, in the street, I, live, I live in the street where Dennis Nielsen lived. Oh, wow, okay. I know. So I go jogging past that in the morning, his old oh. house. But um, I've got, I don't know what it is. I think it's just try, it's trying to figure out how do these people's brains work? Yeah. Obviously, they just, I mean, it's it's a weird thing to keep watching. But I was thinking, because I was saying to my friend the other day, she was saying, no, you've been single for so, such a long time. She went, would you ever think about doing like a Tinder or did it? And I said, well, A, I'd get murdered. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. I'd get, I'd be the person that's been murdered. And I'd be on one of those telly programs going, well, <laughs> okay. I'd on Tinder. And I said, and also, if I put in my profile, uh, name, Gail, um, bald, uh, watches, meet, marry, murder, watches, snapped, women who kill. Who's the, who's the, she sounds like the girlfriend for me that's the one for me she sounds what, like a great catch <laughs> what, what i found fascinating about the dharma thing though as well is that i, I, I kind of liked him in certain stages of it even though you know what he's doing you like it the way netflix have like right, presented right, him as yeah. a person so like, are you kill me after this interview is that what you're saying <laughs> no god no jesus christ oh my god i'm so pleased we're doing this on zoom <laughs> <laughs> you do you know what I mean, though, after watching dark no i, I don't like, like i don't like serial killers as uh, as people, I just mean the way Netflix presented Dharma. It, it was quite like a likable character, even though you knew what you were doing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> next. Okay. Right, okay. Let me just try and jump out of this hole. <laughs> What's the next? I've got no bullet points left, girl. I've got it. That that's it. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, I, I'm sticking by it. I, I, I think there. It, 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 obviously, you don't like people I like think, that. I think the, the way it was presented. Should I try and rescue this? Yeah, go on, mate. Cheers. 
I'm thinking maybe you thought that at certain points he was very vulnerable and he felt very um, guilty, but then he couldn't stop himself. I'll take that because because I, I do agree with that. Um, I'm just not as good as words with, uh, as you as a. You, know. you just go. Yeah, I really liked him. He was really nice. He's a, <laughs> no, I didn't. I'd love to go out for a pint with him. That would be lovely. Oh, that that might end up being the the clip to the promotion to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus! Right. Okay. So, so where where do you see your your role in life now, then, Gail? I've got no idea. I don't even know what's happening tomorrow. No, I do actually. I'm doing something. But um, <laughs> do you know what? Um, I just take each day as it comes, to be honest. Um, I think, um, you know, with my daughter being away at uni, I don't think she realises how much I miss her. Yeah. Miss my mum, miss my dad. My dad went really suddenly. My mum, she was ill for a long time. And I just think, I'm just going to do whatever makes me happy. As long as I've got, you know, I've been homeless, I've been out of work. Uh, I've had all sorts of, yeah, nothing too bad. I'm still standing. Everyone goes through terrible times. But now I think with the country and the state that it's in, I'm not going to think too much. I'm going to be, make sure I've got enough money to look after myself, my daughter, make sure there's a roof over my head because homeless wasn't the best fun that I've ever had. Yeah. And um, just try and smile every day. I know it sounds really stupid and cliched, but... You know, I just want to go to gigs. I want to go to see stuff in the theatre that I never thought I'd want to see. Only if I get free tickets, mind you, because it's quite yeah. expensive. Um, or just be nice to people. And, and if people piss me off, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to let it go over my head. If people are mean to me, go over my head. I have not got an argument in me. I just want to be smiling and happy and get a show at the Edinburgh Festival and try to yeah. be really funny. I'm not inviting you because you might kill me. <laughs> no, no. God, I've got the right name for myself here now. <laughs> uh, well, what I'm, I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to go away and think about what I really meant by what I said. <laughs> and then I'll write it. And no, I'll, I'll not bother you ever again because you'll think I'm... Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, because strangely, your, your daughter uh, goes out with one of our writers for our gym, which is just how small this world is sometimes as well that's... and he's in a great band Pincher in manchester uh Pincher yeah they are great. um i've not been allowed to see a gig because maybe i'm just too old and too uncool yeah. but i have seen them on youtube and i think they're great they don't, me... don't invite me either i think it's because i'm too old as well oh is that what I it have is a word with this oh. kid. well no they reminded me of um like a very young um blur yeah and, that kind of that yeah i think they're super cool i think they're going to yeah. do great and um, fingers crossed for them yeah, yeah. but you're very uh, welcome um, uh, I, I don't know if you're invited to a gig one day but i'll probably <laughs> have to stand at the back and not get involved yes. in any of the dancing or whatever that is yeah, yeah. Nice, one. nice one well it's it's you're a beautiful soul gail i really appreciate your time for joining Thank us today you. is there anything you want to share with um with, with the world uh just to finish off before you i'll let you get off and enjoy um, the day? Just any projects you want to pull, uh, 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 pull like that, like that. If you find something, it's fine. My cousin just um, emailed me from Canada and oh. he's like, you're on a haunted program over here in Canada. And I was like, am I? That's great. <laughs> so I knew it was out here. It's, it's, I think it's on Discovery Plus, Haunted Scotland. It's on Discovery, Discovery or Discovery Plus. Yeah. I don't watch anything that I do. And then, um, yeah, there's bits and pieces coming up, but I'll tell you about it in the next interview. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah I would just say to everybody, I don't know. If you need to talk to someone, talk to someone. Um, if you think someone needs you to listen to them, go over and ask them if they want to have a cup of tea or, you know, just be nice. Be nice. It's really effing simple. Gail Paul, I really appreciate your time. Thanks, mate. Oh, and, and we can hug now as well. Everyone, oh, everyone, yeah. But I always ask people, because I love a hug. And I, if I see someone, I'm like, can I give you a hug? And not just random strangers. Yes. Because I get arrested, and if you did it, they'd arrest you because you're gonna. You think <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer is nice? So, <laughs> I've got a name for him. Nobody hug him. Nobody hug him. <laughs> but yes, and I hope you get better, and I hope you. Yes. Um, oh, thank you. Good afternoon, and I'm sorry that we sort of like didn't get chatting last week because I had um, problems with my Mac. But it's all good. It's all good.